um, virtually. <laughs> so uh, I want to talk a little bit about our team. We have Jasmine Grossman as our president. We have myself, Alex Hurlian, as vice president. We have Julio Mora as our treasurer, Johnny Malpica as our director of communications, and then Justin Alexander as secretary. Our faculty advisors are Professor Juan Ayala and Professor Paul Drake. A little bit about our mission. EJB Design stands for the Edward J. Blaustein Drawing to educate students in innovative graphic negotiation skills. So the purpose is to facilitate discussion, practice, innovation, and the graphic conveyance of planning ideas, recognizing that intu intuitive drawing skills um, improve a planner's ability to design a physical environment. We are seeking to demonstrate the benefits of sketching first and using computer programs second. Uh, using this philosophy, we are exploring and sharing graphic rendering techniques that complement the urban planning and design thought process. So a little bit about today's overview, we'll have session one today with Professor Nellison. We'll talk about the um, urban design sketches by hand drawing. Uh, 12 p.m. we'll have Barbara Fega present from sketches to graphics, how you convert from hand drawing to computer uh, generated graphics. And then later today, we'll have Professor Juan Ayala at 2 p.m. Um, talk about the dig digital rendering tools with graphics. So I hope you brought pens, pencils, and paper. Um, if you have questions on how to get to Miro, let us know. And don't forget about a raffle because we have a lot of cool things that we put up together for you to have. So I'll let Tony share his screen. Let me stop sharing. And it's all yours, Tony. Okay, hang on a second here, sir. Okay. Can you see, can you guys see this? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, the key factor to much of the stuff is, uh, you know, how how and I you know fundamentally believe that you really have to have sketching, which expands um, the whole idea of the design process. Now, uh, as you guys know, I, I have always believed that the future belongs to those who can visualize it. And you know, my whole career has been really about visualization in some form or another and try to, to do those kind of visualizations which gets projects implemented. I also, you guys also know this diagram which I've used over and over and over again and that everything goes through this phase of evolution. Urban, urbanism goes through this phase of evolution to the point it formates, it optimizes, it declines and it, re, and it, it rehabilitates in some form. And most of the stuff in terms of the sketching that I've done uh, through my entire 50 year, 60 year career now, have usually been in places which are either on the decline or in the, the next evolutionary stage of, of, of redevelopment. And you all know this one. I mean, this is the one that really is the visual preference. It's really about the new book coming out um, that really says that the, the, the character of a place is dependent upon your attitude, beliefs, normative behavior, and your motivation to comply. But the key factor is that these are responding to visuals and those visuals inevitably begin with the eye in terms of understanding what you see or, or looking at what you see. And for me, it's, you know, it's, it's almost 60 or 70 years of photographing and hand sketches, which I, which I firmly believe are really one of the critical factors of getting what's in your eyes or in your mind, actually in your mind. And then of course, then to machine simulation. And I think EJB design is really fantastic. And the fact that it is exactly moving in that kind of a, a category over time. But I mean, I can't really say enough how important the pencil and paper actually is. Now, you know, I, I grew up with this. I mean, I grew up, but my training at the University of Minnesota, and many of you know, we started out with 92 people who entered the five-year program and seven of us graduated. And it was really a pencil school. It was one that at that point, everything had to be drawn. This is not ever, I mean, computers were not even thought about, nor were calculators. But you know, there's a typical little redevelopment plan for St. Paul, and what you had to do is develop a rendered plan, and then you had to uh, generate a rendered perspective. And those were absolutely fundamental to every major uh, project. This one was, was a sketch I did in 1964. You can see things start to become a little bit stylized as you get really better at it. Um, you know, but be that as it may, this was really a critical factor of, you know, of this and maybe 20 or 30 other sketches that you had to not only show the plan, but you actually had to show what the place looked like. 
Now, when I went to Harvard, Harvard got this massive grant from HUD to develop this new column for the United States. Um, and I worked as a research assistant on that um, for the entire period of time I was there. And it turned out to be this massive plan of for, 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 and, you know, with, uh, with a major town center, uh, a new, uh, several villages surrounding it connected by a, a light rail system, which meant it was primarily pedestrian. But when it came to do the final um, presentation to the HUD folks um, in a big conference, what, what I was in charge with and Roger Transick, but primarily, this is primarily my work, was to take a sequential walk through the actual um, new town itself. And you can see here, starting at the bottom left, you can see two of the most important parts of it. One is your section, of course, and you guys know that, and then it's the little perspective. So the combination of perspective um, and, 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 and section. So this one was all the parking was kept on the periphery and the whole interior was essentially walking, uh, walking, moving sidewalks or some kind of a transit system. And you can see it goes from zero to one minute, three minutes, uh, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes. And you can see the kind of the sequence um, on the, on the right-hand side. And then it went all the way to the town core. Uh, all of these are just really quick, what I call, I mean, you guys call sketches, but I'm really starting to call them doodles. And you'll see a little bit later why I actually started to call them that, not a doodle pole, but a, a doodle itself. But any, anyway, what's really interesting about it, all the signing has all the names of, the, of, the, of my, my colleagues who actually worked on the project. But you know, th these became something that I really thought was really an important part of my early thinking about places. Now, the five applications in terms of where you guys typically use this stuff versus conceptual design sketches and diagrams. And I think that's really the critical first factor. And then sketches over maps, sketches over photos, sketches to create simulation, and sketches to produce the final renderings. All of these I think are really important because the more um, uh, a facile you become with the sketch idea, the better off it is. Now I wanna, but here are the typical ones you all know, you know, typical sections. Um, and you can see there, the, you, after you practice enough with this, the, uh, the, the actual scale of the stuff starts to become manifest. I mean, you can start to do stuff that are really pretty much the scale. Uh, it takes practice, but those are really critical factors. Uh, also elevations and basic sections. I mean, to try to understand how something actually works. Uh, these are really also really a very, very quick um, little, these are little quick little sketches. And of course the basic notion of a structural section um, through a building uh, starts to become really, really critical in the process. And you can see the column structure and the heights on the side of it. Um, now, the, 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 obviously what this begins to lead to um, is our form-based code. And uh, all these form-based codes that I know of, of the, of the ones that I've developed and other people have developed that I know, all have these elements as major part of the plan um, that started essentially um, with, a, with, with sketches. Now, this one, in terms of your ability to be able to do this, this was a competition that we entered for the Miami Convention Center. And this was the group meeting for the first time. And, and most of this stuff happens in restaurants or in conference tables, or, you know, you just have to be able to, to sketch it. Now for you guys, maybe it'll be a, you know, it'll be a sketch pad um, where you're projecting on a wall or what have you, but you can see here, this is just the first conceptual set of ideas for how this works as you're talking through a project. But then it gets a little bit more refined. You can see the, the through the ABC components of it. Uh, and again, that basic section, uh, the first notion of the sections uh, uh, horizontally through the building in terms of, uh, of, of housing on the outside and then the interior spaces, uh, particularly the big exhibition spaces and the green roof. And then, you know, some of the little details for solar panels and, and you've got to be able to do this really quickly. You know, you, the faster you can do it uh, and the more practice obviously you have, you know it. Here's one which is really interesting. This is a technology center I did with some people down in Miami for a competition. Um, and this started with the, I think this is the Chinese symbol for well. Uh, and of course then, you know, this just dissolved on top of it as the kind of the sketch, uh, the overall sketch plan. Now, the thing that I know from my experience, and I'm sure this can be reinforced, is that the fundamental basic diagram is the axiometric or you could call it isometric axiometric. I mean, because most people 
you know, you're going to find in your career, most people can't read a plan. They have no idea what a plan is. They may have some vague notion, but they can't imagine it in three dimensions. And that's where I think, to me, the axiometric is your quickest and, and absolutely your down and dirtiest and most fantastic and easiest thing to do. Here's one I did when I first came to Rutgers. I think this is 73 or 74. And I was looking at transfer of development rights and preserving farmland in the Garden State. So here's a little plan. And then here is the little axiometric, you know, it's the solar panels on the roof, you know, the tractor out in the field, 75% of it has crop potential. Uh, it's got the little windmill and what have you. Again, these are really, really quick sketches. Even these that we did for, I can't tell you how many village plans that I've done now. People look at it and say, okay, you can, you can note it. There's a civic building, the store, the, you know, the, 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 the common, the alley in the back. You, can, you guys can read this plan. But what you really need to do is to be able to do these. And these are really down and dirty little axiometrics that are watercolored. Uh, I really have a strong, strong, strong belief uh, in these. And you, know, you can do anything in, in axiometric. Here's one I did with Cesar Pelli for the Hudson Navy Yards when we were doing, I mean, Hudson uh, uh, train yards. Um, this was a, a sketch and he said to me, wow, you really know how to sketch. And I, you know, th and these are just, you know, as you know, are really, really simple axiometrics. Now, here's the latest of where that's gone. Uh, to, in fact, right after this meeting, there's a major meeting with the city council and the mayor of Princeton for this new master plan. And I have been working now with this whole idea of the five and 10 minute, uh, or what was called from Paris, the 15 minute walking city, right? So the first thing you do, you know, you diagrams here where you have your primary five minute walking distance. Here's where you have your primary 10 minute walking distance. Now within that, those particular areas in the city, in the town of Princeton, where, and then by the way, the third piece of this is a two and a half mile bike ride. So th there's, you look for all opportunities within the context of that. And here's the actual plan itself, the blue represent areas where there are your existing parking lots or what have you that can require some level of intervention into the actual plan itself. Now, I established uh, susceptibility to change as essentially 12 criteria um, within five to 10 minutes surface parking lots, one story buildings, high land improvement ratios, uh, owner agreement, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is the first one I started. Now, Princeton Future is a group of people um, who have no graphic experience whatsoever. Um, and so I was just, I was uh, asked to be on the board. I am on the board. And so this is how we started the conversation. And I said, well, here's an area which is moderately susceptible to change. And, and here's a little view shed of, 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 of some one story buildings that could possibly change. So here they are. And again, this is all, as you know, just from Google Earth. Um, you, uh, you, these are little one story buildings. Uh, and it said, well, it could be that. Now this, this is what I call a doodle. I mean, in, it, see, it's not a refined sketch. You don't need a refined sketch. You have to give them some ideas of the volumetrics of it. So, I mean, this, and I'll take that back again. And, I, and I've also found that the whole dissolve technique works extraordinarily, works extraordinarily well. And then you just superimpose the, uh, the, the ground level view on top of the sketch. So they have some idea. Now, I, I had no idea <clears throat> that these folks did not understand this. I mean, I should have, but I didn't. I mean, they were just blown away by this. And this sketch took me three minutes to do. Now the building on the right, then we found that they started the conversation. Well, the building on the right, the guy is in Switzerland, he wants to develop it. Um, so I said, well, let me have a look at that. So let's do a doodle for that one. So you start with this and you say, well, one of the most important things here is that we have to maintain the existing facade. So you just draw it in first. Okay, we really like that facade, but the whole other building, he, as far as this guy is concerned, that should go, but the zoning will allow you to go five stories. So that's the little second doodle on top of that. And then you just add it in, just add the, add the pieces in. Now you see nothing here is precisely done. It's all in this fabulous ability to, uh, to create a sketch. And they looked at this one for the first time and went, wow, really, that could really happen? Notice how you carry the cornice line along, you keep the existing building. And this maybe, maybe, maybe is a 10 minute sketch. 
you know, but again, I've had a lot of practice doing it because I believe in it so strongly. I want to show you a bunch more of these things. Every time I've done one more of these things, this the town just this, these guys just go gazonkers. So here is the Westminster Community College, completely empty now. So I said, well, let's lay out the road structures. You guys know you start out with your road structure, your basic bones of the place. And then, you know, you say, okay, here are the buildings we're going to keep. That's a high school up above, and we'll keep some of the buildings, but most of it's parking lot and open spaces. Then I started to lay out the typical 64 foot, as you know, double loaded corridor building, which are these are pretty straightforward. Then you pop it into the axiometric. Again, super, super, super easy to pop it into the axiometric. I mean, you don't even you require no, no rulers, no scale. I mean, I don't require a scale on this, but usually I put the scale at the bottom so I've got some sense. But then you take it one step further and that is, okay, those are not enough, but then you add this and then they go, wow. And it's so easy to do. Um, these are just axiometric trees. You just, you just, you know, you just, you just pop them in and you notice most of the stuff that I've been doing lately, especially here, is I'm reclaiming the roofs that if you build on top of something a la Corbusier, uh, you, you reclaim the roofs as green as you can possibly do it. And then, you know, here's what it's 200, 325 units. You measure it out roughly how many parking spaces, et cetera, et cetera. Here's another one. This is under this is the, the Princeton Shopping Center and the building at the bottom left has just been abandoned because they've just built a new one. So again, I just laid it out, just, just lay out some of the some of the basic buildings, pop it up in the axiometric um, and then uh, add, add the green. And you're going to see here, I separated the two pieces. First, I did the green roofs just where I like the idea of cutting the buildings down to the point where people actually have a lawn. They can live up the fifth floor and have a lawn. Uh, it's gonna be, I'm gonna have to fight for this because developers are gonna wanna do it without any of this stuff. But if I get a chance to write the code, this is what they're gonna have to do. And then you add the landscaping to it. I mean, the same, the same, little, the same little technique. This one is tricky. There's the existing parking deck in the downtown. They wanted me to do a sketch of the existing parking deck. So I laid it out. But then I had to do a basic section. I had to explain this section to them. Listen, we're not going to lose the parking. Here's where we're going to add it in. We're going to do liner buildings on the side, do two stories up above, add green roofs on the top of it. So, you know, and they look at that like, okay, okay, I think I understand uh, what it is. So then why I will typically go back and then same response, pop it up, uh, pop it up, and then, you know, add the green roofs. But this one, I had, it did something different. Remember I said from the very beginning, you have the sections, and then, not, and then the plans, and now you have to start showing them what it's like in three dimensions. And again, you guys know how to do this really quickly. You sketch over it at the relative heights. And this one, I just did it kind of incrementally. I started, well, let's start adding some windows. Let's see how that does. Let's some, add some more windows and see, add some corners on the top. Now, I have been doing this in, in the sketchbook. Uh, yeah, I think sketchbook, which is really nice because you can do it in layers. You just pop it off in layers. Um, I've, I've, in fact, I've, I've found I've, I'm doing that more and more than actually doing it in pencil. And then add trees. Simple. And you can still see, I really like the fact that you can still see the remaining pieces underneath, uh, under, under, under the bottom. And there, you know, there, there, are just a there are just a bunch of them, but some of them get a little bit more abstract. This is the old municipal building. And I said, well, this needs a really exciting new kind of a building. And so this is, this is about the cheapest trick that you can do. Uh, I just simply yeah, superimposed <laughs> that building on top of that building. Uh, and, you know, and they all looked at it and said, wow. I mean, you know, what's really neat about it is that most people just can't, you know, just can't do this. Now, here's my house. There was my house before we sold it. Uh, this is a little sketch over. I wanted to put some solar panels on the house. Um, again, just do this as a matter of fact. This one is, you know, you start, you got your wireframe, and then you start saying, well, well, I'm really not quite happy with the wireframe. So, you know, again, the sketch perspective, all these are the preliminary forms. As you guys know, I never allow anyone uh, in my office at the time to go directly from the sketches to a complete drawing. It just, does, it just doesn't work that way. You have to be able to sketch on top of it, but notice, uh, you know, the X's are take those all out. Let's add the buildings in slightly different ways. Let's pop up some of the buildings. And then of course the basic street section um, and preliminary wireframe. Uh, I'm really anti moving it into full uh, rendered stuff right away. I just, for, for me, it just never works. I really think that it has to go through a kind of, of a preliminary stage. This is the one we did for Camden. 
They started out with the basic, you know, configuration itself. This is this is my sketching on top of that, and then uh, Juan produced this drawing off of that. He's been a wonderful collaborator, uh, and so have been most of the simulators that I've worked with. Now, the thing that's also interesting is a composite process. Here's where you get some basic idea. This came from Atlantic Station in uh, in Midtown. Uh, this is a project where you know you build a basic. Uh, you know, there's nothing articulated on here yet, but trees in kind of basic scale, and then sketches on top of it. And even the again the same technique of building up, building up, building up. Don't think you can go from, from sketches immediately uh, to uh, to final to to final drawings. And those happen, you know, pretty pretty consistently. This is the one we were doing for Liberty Harbor North. Uh, we are designing initially. Uh, that was our design for the for the square in the middle, and then we were starting to play with the various street configurations. Um, and then what you know, obviously, the early ones, as I said, starting earlier back with sections. This is the one for McCarter Highway. Um, this one was for Mulberry Street. And again, adding really going back and repeating myself a little bit here, just adding a little bit of color. I really think that some of the strongest sketch stuff is one where you just limit yourself in terms of your color palette. Um, you know, black and white drawings, um, uh, green and one other color or two other colors. Uh, you notice the blue repeats itself and the green repeats itself. Um, and then, of course, you can then take it into the three dimensional models and then inevitably it determines itself on simulations. But there's a lot of steps, as you know, that happens before this, this starts. And again, this is another one for Camden. Take the parking deck down, do a play, basic sketch of what it would look like. And then this is the simulation of what it looked like after it was completed. Uh, another one for Camden, uh, the new, the new uh, library um, sketch over the preliminary. And then you have the final rendering, which starts to emerge um, from all those initial thoughts. And you know, and these there's so there's just so many of them. I I said to uh, I said to Jasmine, I don't know how in the world uh, you know uh, you know I can show you all this stuff because I have so much of it in my library. But one of the things I think is really important is you're photographing existing positive and negative places. I mean, I can't I can't stress that enough. Uh, I mean, I, I must have in my digital library now at least 3 million images. And I think I've thrown God knows how many million images away already of slides, which I can no longer use that are digitized. But one of the things that I think is really important about that is that you guys have that capability of being able to visualize. And of course, it's been used for me in 400 places across the United States with, you know, with a, with a value put on it. Uh, you know, images have value and they respond to people in slightly different ways. And one of the things that I have, done, this is one that we did, again, a black and white sketch, uh, a quick sketch over that I did. I think this would be great if we leave the existing uh, uh, parking, diagonal parking, but let's improve the facade. Let's add some streets and streetlights as a kind of a quick sketch. And then uh, this was the simulation that happened. And the uh, negative, the first image was a negative value. And of course, this one went off the top of the scale. Again, the, the ability to pre-imagine that also helps the simulators because the simulators uh, can actually see, okay, what you want in here is you want some streetscapes, some trees, some awnings, some benches, some flower pots, you want some people. Um, and you can see uh, that's pretty much what started to happen because they then went to their simulation library and just pulled these, pull these pieces out. Another one, I mean, these are all uh, variations on uh, how places have started to change through simulations. And you, know, you guys know, these things pretty well and it's magic i mean for a lot of people out there who are not a, not a physical planners um this is this stuff they they they, they see this as, as magic um they go wow never never seen that before and i think that's really the the really the the, the value a uh, princeton did one for princeton here we had took one corner and did four simulations for it um, of course which one came out the highest uh the one with the round corner of course came out the highest uh, but be that as it may. And then, of course, what it leads to in the end is professional renders. Now, this is the one for, um, for Bayside. This is under construction now. Um, in fact, Eric Fang and uh, 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 Perkins Eastman uh, actually took our redevelopment plan and created the final urban design plan. But here's where some of the, the ideas and these, these images, the project was done about 10 years ago, but what lives after a project? is not the redevelopment plan, but what lives after the projects are the renderings. 
So moving yourself from sketch to renderings, this is what goes up on the billboards. This is what sticks in people's minds. Plans don't stick in people's minds, but these renderings do. And of course, all these renderings started out, you know, obviously, as you can see earlier, um, with, uh, you know, with, 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 basic, with basic sketches um, and, and, and simulations. Now, I'll end this, but here is the first one that I did when I came to New Jersey. Uh, this was a contract Carl Hintz and I had, who became uh, Clark Caton and Hintz. Carl and I were partners for about 10 years. And we got this contract to do Hamilton Street in Franklin Township. Uh, and this was, you know, 74, 75, 76. So you can see on this one, the upper left hand is, is a photograph that I took of the existing street. The one on the top right is a sketch I did on tracing paper on top of that said, okay, with trees, sidewalks, you know, <laughs> a lot of the things you see. And then the bottom one is the cover of the report. And what we did is we, reprint, we printed the top one in a piece of plastic. So the piece of plastic folded on top. So people from when they just picked up the report could fold the piece of plastic back and forth and could see the change without ever having to even read the report. And in fact, I thought it was funny when Bob Bisick, who was the, uh, who was the, uh, the director of Somerset County Planning Board for years and years and years, when he retired, he sent me that project back. 35 years later, he sent it back to me. He said, Tony, this is the first simulation I ever saw. So I thought you guys would find that one. But again, it all begins with that. Uh, you know, I, and, and, and I, you know I, I, I just can't be happier you know, when you see these things begin to evolve, that it really goes from the eye, which means that you have to develop a critical eye, uh, to the hand sketch to the machine. Now, what I'd like you guys to do, and some of you know this already, is that you have two sketches, and there's a negative one, and there's a negative one, and a positive one. And I use this for my visioning class, and uh, in fact, I'm going to show you one that 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 Jasmine did. But um, what I'd like you to do is to look at this sketch and develop just two layers on top of that, but just sketch out those things which are the most negative. Now, the reason why I this is such a powerful exercise, is that most people scan the whole thing. I mean, and there's so much negative here, and this will go minus six, minus seven in the visual preference survey by everybody, no doubt. But what are those components that have made it so negative? Um, and I think it's extremely important that you guys start to get into the habit of doing that. Now, uh, here's what, this is one that, that Jasmine did, and I kept it from last semester, and you can kind of see, here's the composite of all the pieces of this, this terrible open piece of land that, that she, was, she was actually looking at, but here, she started with the road. I mean, she started with the road structure. I mean, this road structure, which was just too wide in the middle of nowhere, then she set on a separate overlay, then added the, the wiring. Then on, a, then on a separate overlay added the actual buildings on the side. So you've got three issues that you can, you can begin to deal with. Now, on the positive ones, it's the same way. I mean, you look at this, there's so much, so many elements of urban design, of really quality urban design, which are in this image. And the question is, is what are they? Now, I, I will show you what she did for this one, which was, I believe, um, a muse or an alleyway or a street um, in London, or it could be any other place, but I believe it's London. Um, and then what you do, she did, is she started out appropriately with the ground texture because people look down at a 15 degree angle. This is what they see most. So this is the first positive element that if you're going to really improve a quality of place, you start out with the positive elements of, the, of, of, of what's at the ground level. Then she added the chairs, uh, then she added some of the uh, the the green, uh, and then she added the 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 signing and the lighting, and then she added the architecture um, to the place as four ways of really beginning to uh, actually look at that. So that's what I would that's what I would really that's what I would really like you guys uh, to do, uh, and that is to look at these two images. Uh, and take and do a kind of a graphic analysis of, 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 of those and then, but just do two. I mean, you don't, you don't have time to do four, but just do two sketchovers on the thing. And then the end product of this stuff is, what are your policy and zoning recommendations? So if you go back, if you go back to this one and however you come up with, if, if you isolate, let's say just as an example, you isolate just all the signs as one example. 
Well, what would be your policy on these signs? Okay, listen, it's strip sprawl. It's going to stay the way it is. It certainly is one way to do as a defeatist notion of it. The second one is most of the stuff is now dead or dying. So the question is, is you know, what do you do with it? What kind of changes would you make? And what, what it means then is your mind can begin to focus on those specific things as you look at that sketch. And I think the idea of layering, which I think is, you know, when I started, we just put tracing paper upon tracing paper upon tracing paper, which I think is still a fabulous technique, but now you just have layers that you can add in everything from my sketchbook that I love the layering system because you can simply add and subtract. And sometimes these sketches get to be, you know, my easy ones get to be three or four or five layers, but sometimes the complex ones get to be 15 or 20 layers. Um, but anyway, that's the exercise. So I, I don't know how you want to take it. I don't know how you guys want to take it from here, but hopefully I've, I've given you uh, what I can this morning. Yes, thank you so much, Tony. That was great. I, I can share my screen now to our Miro board. I just sent the link if you guys didn't sign up um, yesterday for it. If you do want to share your sketches, we're going to upload them there. Um, so, um, Professor Nelson, Nelson, if you can stop sharing your screen and I can share the Miro board so we can all look at the images. I can also show you a way to um, sketch on top of the Miro board if you. Um, didn't print out this image or if you don't have a way to draw over it digitally. Um, so what you can do for this, this is our mirror board in here. I sent you the link. You just have to connect through Gmail. Um, so you can take, you can um, select this image um, and copy and paste it if you um, are going to be drawing over it in here. And you can actually draw um, in this mirror board and make it a little bit smaller so everyone's drawings can fit. There's the um, pen tool over here. If you wanted to draw over the different elements um, this way, like the signs, for instance, like um, Professor Nelson mentioned, you can do it this way. Um, if you don't have a pen and the sketching, like that is a bit hard. You can also use arrows um, to point some things out um, and just make that line a little bit thicker or change the color. Um, or you can also just put text over it or even use a little um, sticky note and just post that on the, um, you can mention them if you can't sketch them at the moment. Um, but if you wanted to even just post these things to the negative portions of this image, you can do it that way as well. Um, but if you are sketching, um, which we hope you are, if you want, you can upload here. So you'd use this, it's also a mobile app. So if you do this on your phone or if you take a picture of it, you can upload it easily from the mobile app there. You select my device and upload the image that way. So I'm thinking since now it's 1037, maybe we can take about five to seven minutes to pick out two layers here, or maybe just five minutes, two layers of negative, negative images within this drawing right here, and then post them to this area here, if you are able to, so we can review it. And then we'll move on to the positive overlay. How does that sound? Mm. Sounds great. <laughs> Oh, you can see actually who's sketching. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I'll stay zoomed in just so everyone can see the image. Um, but if you have it open on your screen, you can feel free to just move over, put it here and draw over it there. Or you can draw on a piece of paper um, what you see and pick out the negative images that way as well. gets abandoned it has to, you have to take your sign down you know that might be something that maybe um, maybe required and of course you know these people are at the last legs at that point because they're you know they're financially drained and they're going like we can't afford to do that but you know listen if you're going to enter into it you got to recycle your sign uh, there's no reason why it should stay up here because you know the, the bottom line of all this negative stuff is is just super depression i mean that's a psychological response that we found from all our work is that you know, if, if things get to be well over the minus one number, um, it, the fundamental psychological response is, is people feel depressed. Oh, wow. Yeah, very, very clear. Very, very, very clear. So once you start to clean it up, then, you know, that level of depression starts to uh, go away. And anytime you can take one down, 
it starts to uh, kind of a generate an idea of kind of a, you know there's hope for the future if people start taking some of this stuff down because it is so 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 negative now oh, look at this one oh, that's a good one so we got the signs we got the um we got the the overhead wiring um and we have got the cobra head lighting so that's interesting. I mean, you could take all three of these issues by itself here and say, okay, how can we deal with the signing issue? I mean, and, and then certainly if suburbia is going to continue, there's no reason that why they have to be 65 feet in the air or 20 feet or 30 feet or 40 feet in the air. You know, the best ones for the visioning process have always been at really at lower levels. Paul is there, so he's really interesting. Well, let's hear another one here. We got, um, what do we got on the second one? On the second one, we've got uh, uh, signing. Um, and the and the light poles and it's interesting the width of the uh, the width of the roadway. So this one, the predominant predominant element of the of the sketch um, are, are 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 the poles. And it's interesting that when you look at it, you got both 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 poles. I mean, poles kind of forming a corridor as you went down the street. Uh, Eric, is this your is this yours? Uh, yes, that's mine. Yeah, no, I can see that would so there would have so the policy on those poles is just, you know, we're, you know, we, the mayor, the meeting, the mayor is walking on the street this morning and the street I live on and, you know, we wanted to get the wiring underground, but, you know, it would cost me 140,000 bucks to have it done on 16 feet in the front of my house, or at least that's what they told me. So we still have all that wiring there, but this is really an issue. I mean, when, and if it gets done, does it get moved to the back? What, what, do you raise it higher? What do you do? Okay, here's the third one. So the third one here is, oh, this is an interesting one. So you got all the wire, you got all the signing, got good. By the way, Jasmine, I can read your writing. The, the, certainly the, the, the poles, interesting enough, you took the poles down on one side, but not the other side, but that's good. But the other one is actually, you actually, um, you actually created a sidewalk, which is kind of interesting. So certainly the signing is a big issue. The overhead wiring is a very, very big issue. Um, the poles are a big issue. Even the this one also has a cobra head lighting. Now, you know, the lighting is a really an important one because, you know, you have to light the roadway. But on the other hand, could you have other lighting uh, that would actually light the sidewalk if you had the sidewalk? But if you had the sidewalk, um, again, looking at this, if this was to be redeveloped in some form, would you pull the buildings up the sidewalk? I mean, you get into a whole, whole series of uh, potential opportunities here because the more negative an image becomes the more positive um you know the, the greater it is in that bottom end of that cycle and then, then it means it's going to inevitably go into some level of rehab that's just what the that's what the that's what the spiral tells you but that's this is a good one okay another, okay got another one another one okay i got a little, i see a little one yeah i see a little oh look at this one it's got some color on it so this one was was the negative aspects of this would be covered over by the green. Is that what I'm reading? Is that what I'm, I'm reading here? I'm just Add saying the, the existing landscape is, is a negative aspect. I got it. Okay. Okay. You got to okay. sketch the nice stuff now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, that's a nice sketch. There's a quick, there's a, there's, 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 a, there's a quick, nice sketch. I mean, what is it? Five minutes, two minutes, three or four, five minutes. Yeah. So we got, we got the signing, uh, we got the sidewalk, we got the width of the road, we got the overhead wiring um, and uh, a few of the contexts of the actual buildings themselves. But it's interesting. It's interesting looking at this, that, that the majority of the sketch overs in the, in terms of the initial response to the sketches, actually the signing, the signing, the overhead wiring, the sidewalk and the road really start to become the four major things. And, um, you know, I guess one actually has a building on it, but most of you really focused on, you know, those major frontage elements, which were really not the, you know, were really not the buildings at all, but really all the other elements that really made it negative. The question would be then if you could go through a photo simulation and to, on the original photo and now say, okay, let's take off everything that's negative, you know, just erase it. And then, you know, and then what would you, what would you, what, what, what would you pray? So oh, there's another good one. It's consistent. I mean, it's the polls, it's the signing. So, you know, if you really had to boil this down among, you know, the 10 or 12 of us who are focusing on this thing now, you would begin to say, listen, we got to find a way to deal with the signs and we got to find a way to deal with the overhead wiring. Those are really two, those would be the really, 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 the really, really big ones. Um, and some, and some element of landscaping. 
But you see, it it it's what's nice about sketching an overlay. You kind of have it in scale, and you can actually look at a whole um, at a whole at a whole series uh, of them. And then what's really nice about it is that. If you if you're using the same photograph, you can then overlay all of these overlays on overlays on overlays, and you can see, hey, the consensus vision here um, is what um, is what we've got. Anyway, good good exercise. And again, we could we could spend the rest of the, uh, the afternoon talking about how in the world we're going to write a re write a zoning code that says when you abandon it, you got to take your sign down, or you know you got to put in different signs. And you could do a simulation of what those signs would look like if they were at lower levels uh, in some other way. Okay, so that's the negative one. So let's now move to the positive one. Typically, by the way, I start with the negative stuff first. You know, you always want to transform the negative stuff first. Uh, never start with the positive stuff if you can help it. I mean, it's it's very enlightening to see the positive stuff, but I usually find in a, in, a, in a survey, let's say we're showing people 150 images or 120 images or so, we always find that the most negative images is counterbalanced by the most positive image. Always, that's just the way it is. And you can find elements in that. So let's go, let's go to the positive image in the time we've got left. And that, as you guys know, is, um, is uh, Faneuil Hall in Boston. Uh, it clearly was one of the granddaddies of, 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 of this movement. Uh, although it's historically, you know, very late comer because, you know, these uh, notions of the bazaars have existed in every major country in the world. Um, you know, Europe is still full of farmers of markets and now farmers markets are coming back. But this one, uh, this was revolutionary at the time when Rouse, when Ben Thompson did it and Rouse decided, uh, Jim Rouse, who built all these shopping centers, decided that he was going to have for the first time an open um, shopping center, quote unquote. Um, so the elements of this one are really, uh, and this thing is, as you know, became the most highly grossing um, shopping place in the United States by square foot basis, and it just revolutionized everything. After this one, after the success of this one, uh, everything began to change. I mean, it was lots of other factors, but, you know, everything, all the major shopping malls started to die, There's a lot of the strip commercial development, and now with COVID, that was the final nail in the coffin, thank goodness for that. But this is a, this is a, a, you know, every time I go to Boston, I go visit it just because, because it's got this fabulous energy and scale. So, and there's so many elements in this plan. So I'll be very curious to see what, what you highlight as the top, the top couple. uses these kind of kiosks um, and in most cases in most cities these kiosks are illegal or else you have to pay these enormous amount of fees in order to be able to get those done understandably but but I also very interesting about this one is the visual termination at the end with the kind of the yellow green with the yellow green color at the end and and you know you can talk a lot about visual termination as being important in terms of enclosure of space but but this one is uh, this one this this one is interesting it's fascinating that both um, both this one and the other one, uh, it's the it's more of the landscape features um, rather than the buildings. I would have thought that you might have outlined the buildings first, but it's not the buildings that that you guys put as the predominant piece of it. What you did theoretically on the first two, if I look at the first two, it's the edges and the ledges and edges, and the landscaping. Um, and then on this one, of course, is the visual termination. And some of the window types. Okay, let's so let's see another one. Ooh, what's this one? Oh, look at this one. Who's is this one? Mine. <laughs> Wow! Wow! Yeah, you got a you got a fast hand. You got a, you, you. It's interesting. Here is just straight. You know, here's something you guys might want to think about. It's you know, I, I I this one does not have the overlay in the back, right? So what you did, if you get rid of the overlay in the back, you wind up with this and this thing. I mean, you listen. This could this could be this could be a Cezanne sketch. You know what I mean? It it has that beautiful 
level of abstraction, but you can still tell everything that's there. Then if you dissolve the back ground back onto it, you then begin to see it in its context, but you can play with, that's why I think that it's hard for me to give up PowerPoint or to give up uh, any one of the other um, uh, design design presentation features, because I love the fact that you can dissolve the things in and out. And, and the longer it takes to dissolve in and out, the more attention you've got people people grab but clearly here you've got the ground texture you got the ledges and edges and you got the trees and you got and you've got the kiosks of the of the three elements so the first three that we saw all seem to have the same um, fundamental kind of pieces now if if you would take this and say okay out of the positive features what we got is the trees the ground textures the kiosk and what have you and now I'm going to ask the really you know really absurd question is, how would these apply to the first negative image? See what I mean? Can you take the elements of the positive stuff and apply it? You're going, oh my God, how in the world do we take a arterial roadway and convert an arterial roadway using these characteristics to be able to make it more positive? You see what I mean? You can start to build up those relationships one with the other. So let's look at another one. And then unfortunately, you guys, I've got an appointment with the mayor that I, I, I've got to go. So let me see one more, but this is fantastic. Oh, this is interesting. Just circle it. So we got circle the people, tree, I got the trees, oh, lots of people, lots of, I can the same. It's, it's literally, you guys, you, I don't know, you're all thinking the same way. You know, you're all thinking trees and, and ledges and edges and people's and, 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 um, and kiosks. Perfect. All right. So anyway, you got the general idea of this. I think it's really fantastic. I'd be, I'd, I'd love to have all of you on a, on a design charrette sometime when we could actually do this, you know, to, in, in a, in a, in a real project in some form or another. Um, but I mean, this is really fabulous. And, uh, you know, Jasmine, thank you for putting it all together. And I, I, I love the technology. The technology can now allow you to do this stuff in a really, really cool and very interesting way. But anyway, um, it's been a real pleasure for me. And I could stay on here with you guys. But unfortunately, I've got to go and I got to go and meet the mayor who's standing outside my door on the street right now. All righty. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry I got to leave, but keep up the good work. Uh, love it, and I'll see if I can tune in on one of your exercises a little later on. But again, thank you for inviting me. I really I enjoyed it, no end. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was a lot of fun. I hope everyone got to learn a lot and enjoy drawing with us. You can continue drawing with whatever you're working on. Our next session will be starting at 12. Um, so if you want to come to that, um, the link tree is in our bio and our Instagram, or if you want the link, just send me a message. I can resend it to you. Um, you're going to be in this board forever. So your sketches will stay here. I'm going to reorganize it again because we'll be using the same board for our session too. Um, but if you want to keep drawing and sketching, continue to do so. Um, and I hope you guys come to the next session. All right. We'll see you guys Bye. again. Have a, Enjoy the rest of the day. And it was, you know, I think I learned as much as you guys. I mean, I just technique, I, I'm, I, I've not done before, and I think this is just superb having all this talent uh, dealing with these kind of urban places. So again, terrific. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to uh, get going, but uh, it was nice discussion stuff. It was fun. Thanks, Andrew. Glad to see you here. Yeah, good to see you too. <laughs> it's been, wow, it's been forever. But yeah. uh, no, I appreciate it. That is one of the some things. So uh, glad I got to do this. And then hopefully next semester I can do more sketching for once. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. I'm probably gonna hop off too. I had a lot of fun.